Hello, this is Information Literacy for the Historian. I'm Dr. B. Lehman, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to write a Chicago 17th edition full note citation in bibliographic as well as footnote format. It's easiest to create a citation if you actually have the full text of whatever you're citing in front of you. For today, let's say that we're citing to the late Ottoman Empire in Egypt, Hybridity, Law, and Gender by Dr. Elizabeth Schlala. From here, you can actually start creating your citation. I'm going to flip into a Microsoft Word document, but you could also do this in Google Docs. So to do a bibliography, you want to type in the word bibliography. I put it in bold, I'm hitting enter twice, and now a Chicago citation starts with the author, if that author is known. So I'm going to put in the last name, and then the first name. And then you want to respect how the author has their name displayed. So if the middle initial is there, you should put it in. If it's not there, don't worry about it. Then you put in the title of the text. The title goes in italics, because in Chicago you italicize a whole thing but put a part of a thing, like a chapter title, in quotation marks. Pay attention to any mistakes so that you can correct them. And then after you finish the title, you actually put in a period to say that this section is done. We're creating units as opposed to a sentence. After the title, you need to put in the publication information. You'll notice that this cover demonstrates the publisher, but it doesn't tell us where it was published. So I'm going to go down to what is referred to as the verso, which is the page after the title page, as opposed to the cover, that then has the publication information on it. The point of a Chicago citation is to tell your reader sufficient amount to actually let them find the exact text that you use to write your paper. For us, what that means is we actually have to put in the place that the thing was published because it used to be that to actually find an out-of-print book, you would have to go to the city where it was published to see if you could get a copy. That isn't true anymore and groups like Chicago are debating whether place actually still needs to be in a citation. For now though, it's still there and so we've actually put in the place that is closest geographically to wherever you're sitting while you're writing your paper. That means if we have options, here for example, we have Oxen versus New York, we pick the one that is closest to us, which is New York. Now, if the city was not well known, so if I couldn't reliably say that somebody in New Delhi would know where New York was, then I'd actually put in a comma and then a two-letter state abbreviation. But if the city is well known, then you don't put that in at all. New York is well-known, Chicago, LA, cities like that. After the city, I put in a colon and then state the publisher. So it is published by Rutledge. And then I put in a comma and then the year of publication. That year of publication can get a little bit sticky because it depends on whether you're looking at the year of publication for your electronic version or your print version, a reprint, etc. For us, at this moment, we're just going to use this date here. And then we end all of our citations with a period to say that we're done. Looking at this citation, however, the formatting is actually wrong. For citations in Chicago, you do want them to be single-spaced in Times New Roman 12-point font with one-inch margins, but you want a hanging indent of half an inch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to my ruler and I'm going to drag the underside of that ruler half an inch in and you'll notice that that underline then followed my ruler across. And there we have it, a book citation. For a history paper, you don't only cite in a bibliography, but you should actually also be writing in footnotes in your text in order to tell your reader precisely where you're getting the information you're talking about. To put in a footnote, I'm first going to make sure my bibliography is on a separate page, so I'm going to insert, page break, you'll notice that that bumps my bibliography to a new page entirely. And the top of this page, the first page, I'm going to go ahead and write this is a sentence. 
after your sentence, you put in a period, and then flush against the period, you insert your footnote. Here, you have all of the information that you need in your bibliography except for the page number. But the format is different. You're writing your footnote to be part of the text and not simply as a reference point. So here, I type in first name, middle initial, last name, comma, because it's part of the text, so it should be read as a sentence, the late Ottoman Empire, After the title, I'm going to open parentheses and put in the publication information. What's in parentheses in English is not read aloud, so this is an aside effectively. And then after I close the parentheses, I'm putting in a comma. In a footnote in Chicago, it's important to end your citation with page numbers if it's relevant. So here on pages one and two, it's talking about the concept of the Levant. So I go back to my notes, put in one hyphen two, and then end with a period. You'll notice that there are some substantial differences between how I did a footnote citation for the book and a bibliographic citation for the book. To have a reference set for this, you can go to the Citations and Bibliographies page on the library's history research guide for undergraduates and actually check out what it looks like to have notes versus bibliography, what is short versus long form, and how specifically to cite two books. Keep in mind that you're also welcome to contact me per email or schedule an appointment if you have any questions. I'm happy to assist with this.